This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. From time to time, we're going to catch up with the people who have shared their story on the show. Last time we caught up with John Blankenstein. He had no market for his premium rock oysters due to the closure of restaurants and was even contemplating throwing them away. After the most challenging period of his career, the pandemic has given rise to new problems on the eve of his new season oysters coming to market. John, how are you going? Good, thanks, Huck. Good to talk again. Uh, how's this period of time been since we last caught up? Yeah, it's been interesting, mate. Um, there's been lots going on. I guess, you know, getting back, picking up where we left off last time I spoke, it was all about finding a market for the oysters um, and you know, getting online and going retail, which was which was fantastic and well received. And shout out to everyone down in Melbourne and Sydney and Canberra, because um, the, the support was huge. And you know, following the um, the episode I did with you, so that was it's fantastic. I guess moving forward, you know, the the biggest problem with me is is just being able to um, find the time and and find a hand on the farm while I try and concentrate on. Um, on you know that retail side of things, I guess. Did you um, manage to get rid of all of your oysters, or did you have some problems with the, m- having so many of them? Uh, yeah. So no, I did, and I managed to sell a, a fair bit. Then I made a decision to um, invest. You know, in light of everything that was happening, I found some money, and I just said, you know, bugger it, I'm just gonna you know go hard and just. I believe in what I do and, and you know, I, I, did, I guess, you know, you, you need to be an eternal optimist in, in this game. Um, so I invested in um, more gear, more infrastructure uh, and I've carried the majority of that through. So I've actually upscaled. Wow. Um, which, yeah, yeah, which is, you know, you know, throwing, you know, fuel on the fire but <laughs> why not, you know, just – just, just going for it, but um, you know, so, so I'm, I'm optimistic because there's got to be a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, this can't just go on forever, and and yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see, mate. But it's, you know, we just, just, you know, one, one, one foot and one foot in fr- out in front at at, at at one time, and we'll just, yeah, we just keep. Re- it's all about re- reorientating the compass, and you know, and, and just setting sail. I guess you know, just. Looking, looking out at the horizon and hoping that there's something better out there. I guess is, is a way, good way to look at it. Well, you did create that online retail platform, and a lot of people were overjoyed, including myself, to be able to order oysters and have them delivered to your front door. Um, but restaurants have also opened up again during this time. What, what's what's trade been like through restaurants for oysters? Well, with our sort of restaurant sales. We, we, we've only got a, a, a small um, group that we sell to, but it's been steady um, up until late. We've had a lot of rain, which has is, is been a little bit problematic with late closures. But but up until that, it, it was steady. The support, you know, was was really good. Um, obviously, we've just lost Melbourne um, with the stage four restrictions. It's very sad to see what's happening down, you know, with our, our s- s- southern cousins. But um. Yeah, you know, definitely support there, mate. Um, and there seemed to be, you know, sort of sales that actually kind of spiked to to, to a small degree. Like just the, the orders were more consistent um, and it just seemed to be a little bit more, you know, buzz around, you know. So, um, yeah, look, I, I think you've got to maintain an optimistic outlook, but um, definitely some definitely support there. For sure, yeah. You mentioned earlier that you've invested in more infrastructure and we are on the eve of sort of a new season of oysters for you to come out of the water. And um, I, I hear that you need some help, but you're finding it difficult getting people uh, down in your area to pull oysters out of the water for you. Oh, 100%. And it's kind of been my Achilles heel. Um, you know, I've had – I can – I was had a period where I where I was getting staff, but it, hanging on to staff, and and now I just can't find anyone. And I, I'm not sure, you know, thinking about it, talking to other producers, I think th- maybe they're in a similar situation. I was actually talking to um, 
Shane Buckley about it, and and he's had a he's had he's got similar issues as well. Um, and I'm not just sure if it's specific to the rock oyster industry, but if it if it's across you know agriculture and and aquaculture, um, you know as a as a as a whole. But but right now it's it's I, I feel like it's virtually impossible to get someone to give me a hand, and and that's a problem because. For me personally, I've got all this energy and I've got this growing farm, but for me to go and capitalize on all the work that I've done in in creating markets and, and connecting with all these wonderful people, if and then all of a sudden everyone's asking me about selling and as soon as I come in season, you know, and I, I want to sell I want to sell to everyone, so I want to open the online shop. But the flip side is that of that is Huck that the farm just stops. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult because like farming is, it's, it's a weekly pursuit day in, day out. And there's so much work that has to go on um, in the background while I'm selling. I just can't stop to do one. And then because then it's, I'm, I'm playing this dreadful game of catch up, cat and mouse. So, yeah. So l- listen, if there's someone out there who, who wants to, get into aquaculture <laughs> give me a call you know we, the, the pay is not amazing but but it's not too bad and look the hours are fine and you get to work out you know in the environment and hang out with me which is, is brilliant and and i'll send you home with oysters too so <laughs> yeah and well mate i'd love to hang out with you and eat oysters for sure and you know we might take for a cheeky surf or we'll go and get some abalone and have a crayfish and we'll wine and dine but but you know, realistically, it's it's you know, I never saw that coming. So, and I'm not sure if it's a reflection of JobKeeper either. You know, because um, you know that incentive is you know, and and I'm th- so thankful for, for that 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 was released. But it it just seems that there's it seems like a real shortage of of people wanting. You know, I I, I think about what's changed. You know, like this with this, there's still just as many people in Australia. You know, it's still talking, you know, about offering a job, you know, there's availability, but, but where is everyone, you know? So I don't know. So who, who knows? But, uh, you know, still got to be optimistic, mate. Hopefully <laughs> someone <laughs> someone's just around the corner. She'll be right. Well, you, you mentioned that, you know, it'd probably be hard yakker and, you know, it's, it's not record uh, salary um, mm. sort of stuff, but... Um, you know what's 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 the great things about uh, a role on an oyster farm that you know could lure someone there? Like, what's some of the joys that you have in producing oysters? I think first and foremost, it's that connectivity to to being outside and, and the environment. And and sure, look, the way I look at it, it's you don't need to pay for a, a gym subscription because it's active fitness. You know, so you, you're outside, you're hauling, but but. I, I guess you know you, you sort of set your own pace, but for me, it's yeah, it's really about being outside and and on the water and and you know even when we're inside and we're and we're grading and we're working from the shed, you know where I where the depot is, you know we're still surrounded in beautiful you know bush bushland and it, it's it's if if you enjoy working outside, then then it, it should be right up your alley. But um, it's very hands on. You know, it's, it, obviously, it's not for everyone. Um, you know, and and by definition, oyster uh, farming is hard work. But it's you know, I, it's it's rewarding. You know, and me personally, as a as a producer, is you know, engaging with others and and getting that their reaction when when the the produce is well received, uh, and that and that's you know, that's the really that's the, that's the jewel right there and there. That's um, that's you know, one of the main reasons why I do it. Is for the appreciation and and you know the reward that comes with you know growing such you know th- such a you know beautiful living creature like the rock oyster for sure. I just yeah, it gets me pumped up. Well, they're coming out of the water this September. What what are the, what are they looking like? Well, at the moment they're they're a bit mixed in condition. Like some are really really good, um, and obviously with all this rain that we've had, some are knocked back a bit, but. September's looking like it's going to be has has all the hallmarks and and um, showing all the signs of, of being a really good month for us to sell. Like it won't take much, you know, with a little bit of warming of water and and with 
a little bit more salinity in the estuary that those oysters should really, really come on and they could be like really, really, really good. Um, some could be phenomenal, you know. So, but so spring's looking really good for us. And, and from the conversations I've had with other growers in, in estuaries along the far south coast, it's, it's similar, similar, um, observation so yeah you know there's a lot of there's a lot of food and it's great to see that we, we're getting this this weather pattern and, and 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 getting the you know the rain and the and the flushing of our estuaries because it's it's very much you know an important um part of the environment is, is 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 to have you know our estuaries you know flowing and having having that movement of water so it you know it just triggers a whole lot of a lot of good things you know so things things are looking up yeah, and the oysters are yeah pretty hardy so um onwards and upwards i think mate well i hear you've been plumbing the depths this afternoon and you've got a bit of a special uh, <laughs> dinner on this evening can you tell us about that yeah well um one of the great things about being a producer is that you get to reach out and connect with people that you may not have normally crossed paths with in your life and and um yourself and uh robbie locker individuals that fall into that category but also chefs and um, i'm fortunate enough to have jesse mctavish staying with me at the moment and and you know just snuck down here for a few days of r&r so i've been showing him the very best of the far south coast and we went and um had a paddle today and caught a few waves it was a really really good day super fun waves and um then um you know just being jess sort of um was talking about what we're going to eat um and what's on the menu so lo and behold i've got the wetsuit back on and um found it found a cozy little corner and went and um inspected the old cray hole and sure enough it was loaded so i've got some um eastern rock lobsters uh, some abalone and sea urchin wow yeah and amazing and rock and and rock oysters <laughs> So, Jeez. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Living living off the water. <laughs> living the high life. Um, yeah. Amazing, mate. Well, listen, um, really good to catch up again. If uh if somebody does want to get in touch and um learn the ropes of oyster farming and help you out there, uh, how can they get in contact with you? I think uh just contact me direct through Instagrams is is a good form, um, or via email, you know, via the uh, website or you know, if you've got access to my number, which is which is on the, all those platforms, just give me a call, um, and I'd you know I'd love to love to talk to you. Um, yeah, come on down, let's let's get into it <laughs> so, for sure. Appreciate it. And you can also um, still buy the rock oysters online. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the shop's shut at the moment, obviously with um, with the late closures and all this fresh, but we're we're hoping that the plan is we're we're gearing up for some sales in September. So keep an eye on that. Yeah, I've had a lot of people um, asking me, and unfortunately, you know, rock oyster rock oysters are seasonal, and and I don't want to put out produce that's not fantastic. Uh, so just yeah, just it it'll be worth the wait. So hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, September, uh, you know, sort of mid September, we, we, we'll be at, be able to um, get that online shop up and running. And um, hopefully that right person's out there. They can come and help me on the farm while I'm running a few retail sales and, and um, yeah, you know, and, and, and filling those orders. So, you know, it, it's all good. What's the, what's the site that people can go, can go to to get in contact with you? It's uh, The website is um, www.mimosarockoysters.com.au or check us out on Instagram, Mimosa Rock Oysters, um, and give us a follow and, Start chatting. Never too busy to have a chat. Well, mate, it's bloody awesome to catch up. I've got to say, I'm not very happy about hearing what you have for dinner, but um, I'm glad. I'm glad <laughs> someone's enjoying the spoils of the sea. Thank you, thank you, and I'll I'll make sure I find some time to get in the car and drive up over the mountain, head across the Monaro, and uh, meet up with you in Canberra, so you can have your fill too. Thanks, up. Oh, amazing. Ah, oh, the door's always open. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> mate. Talk soon. Cheers, brother. Thank you. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of Australia's HOSPO community, suppliers and producers in search of hope during this pandemic. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram 
at Deep in the Weeds podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.